Welcome to my first tutorial uh, with using Farmhouse collection from Graphic 45. And I uh, will be making a mini album, mainly used for recipes. The first part of this tutorial, um, I'm really cutting the paper and choosing what pattern paper I want to be using. So first I like to take all of the pieces and prepare them and then I put the page together. In my PDF tutorial you'll have a table with all of the parts and the measurements and they're referred to as A1, A2, A3, etc. So you'll know exactly which piece of paper and which pattern goes with each part. Here I'm showing you A1 base paper and A1 pattern paper that will go together. So you put the pattern paper, you will apply it on top of the cardstock. These are some of the other pattern paper that I'll be using. Right now in the background where you can't see me doing on the side is uh, I'm just using my paper cutter to cut the pieces. And I'll be back here in no time. Okay, now I cut this is uh, A2 piece. Well, that will go over the top flap. Let me give you some measurements. The A1 piece, which is the ba base of the page, is five and a half by eight and a half. And the top flap is five and three eighths by seven and a half. And the second top flap is also five and three eighths by seven and a half. These will be scored twice on the top, and you I always score at half an inch on the side. So I'm scoring both pieces now at a half an inch. There are three flaps on this page. It's a very simple page with just a three flap waterfall. And then I have a belt that closes. So the belt is made with two side flaps actually. This is a pattern paper that will be used for A3, which is also one of the top flaps. So I have the base of the page and I have three black cardstock that are five and, a half, five and three eighths by seven and a half that are scored at the top and three pattern paper that go on top of the flaps and one pattern paper that goes on top of the base. I'm cutting a4 now. And I'm sh showing you how I'm just using leftover scraps from the other cutout to use for the belt. And the belt are two side flaps that will be six by three is the cutout and I'm scoring it on the side. So 
So every time you score, you have one side has a groove and one side has a mount. And then you fold it to where the mount is on the outside and the groove is on the inside. This is a pattern paper that from Graphic 45 that you have some card in card um, inside that I usually cut like to cut those out. It has ba uh, border patterns as well, which we'll be using. And I am cutting that middle section where it says farmhouse. I really should have put that more up. I only see half of what I'm doing there. <laughs> okay, here we go. So we have a, punch, a card out, card that I cut out. This piece that I just cut out is A6 and the measurement of that is 3 and 7 eighths by 2 and 3 quarters. This will be the inside of the belt. This is piece A7. And that's the back side of the side flap. And I'm cutting out from pattern paper five and a quarter by two and three quarters. And then, uh, I am usually the, the placement where I try to cut my pieces makes sense with previous cuts. So I will get the most use out of one paper. It's very important where you decide to cut it. To really preserve the paper. Okay, so now I think I have all of my pieces cut and uh, we will begin to assemble them. So first what I do is um, I'm going to mark the base with uh, at the back side of it I'm going to mark top. This way I always know which side is the top, which is the right, which is the left, and I'm not going to, it, it will help me prevent uh, putting the pattern paper upside down. Okay. The A5 right flap, which will be the belt, will be placed on the right side of the base piece in the center. So you need to measure the distance between the two corners and make sure that it is centered right in the middle. Apply glue tape to the back of the flap where the wing is on the outside. If there's any excess sticking out, just glue it out. And here's the tape on the outside part of the flap. Remove the back of the tape. And I'm turning it around so that I'll be able to see it straight. Okay. A 
Okay, this is going to be the front. I'm, I'm explaining that this is the front of the flap and the back side of the flap. In the written tutorial, I will be referring to two sides, inside and outside. All right, so these are the pattern paper and the flap. I'm, I'm removing the pattern paper out and I'm going to fold the flaps where the score line is. See, this is the mount and this is the groove and you're folding it inwards to where the groove is. And then you just iron it a little bit. Don't press too hard, just a little bit. Okay, I need to do it three ways and they will be placed on the paper cascading order. So there's a half an inch below. So this is how it's going to be placed on top of the paper and on the other side you will see the bottom. Okay, I'm just showing you how it's going to be placed on top of the paper. And in the PDF instructions, you will have a sketch exactly how to place them. Once you've done a couple, it'll be easy. And you, when I say cascading waterfall, you'll know how to apply it. And you always start with the one at the top. So these three are the same size. You remove the tape and you place it at the top. I turned it over so that the top is actually closer to me. It's just easier that way to make sure that it's nice and straight. And there is a teeny bit of difference between the edges of the paper of the flap to the edge where it's folding and the reason is so that when you fold this it will be folding easily you see I'm able to move it comfortably if it's too tight it will interfere now this is the line where I'll be placing the second flap I'm removing the tape just partially. I'm placing it where I want it to be with my left hand and when I'm happy with where it is I'll be pressing down on the right side. And now I'm removing the rest of the tape slowly and that helps making sure that the paper is placed straight. I'm going to do the same thing for the third one. Now all three flaps are applied and this is the construction of the page. Now we're moving on to putting the designer paper. So this is the paper that will go on the base and always put this down first before you apply glue and glue it on just to make sure that the sizes that you cut it is the good, a good size. So I'm just making sure that the size is good and it's not interrupting all the foldings. I think this one I cut a little too much and I went ahead and changed it up. Okay, so I changed it up and I cut a new piece and now it's good. The next step is to paint the edges. I'm using a black permanent marker to paint the edges. 
you're doing more of a vintage style or stress style, you can use ink as well, you know, with the ink pad and uh, or whatever means you have. I do not recommend using regular water soluble markers because they will bleed or they will fade. So any type of marker that is a uh, broad tip is good. I sometimes use gold or silver. It gives it a little bit of a cleaner look. And now I'm applying tape. I like to use tape with my um, albums. This is score pal tape. It's very good. It's sturdy. It will make sure that your album lasts a long time and it doesn't make the paper crinkle. If you're using regular water uh, base glue like Elmer's, then everything will crinkle and you don't want that. Because water is porous and it absorbs the water and then it dries out. Another option is to use tacky glue. Some people like to use it. It's a lot faster, a lot faster, but it's not as clean as using the tape in my opinion. It's just as strong, but not as clean. Because you really have with it with the tape you can get all the way to the edges more than with the glue but I use both and you will see where I apply the glue uh, in the center usually or on small pieces so this stage where I'm taping all the pieces in the next videos you will not be able you will not see I come assembling the page with all the paper already marked with a black marker. Everything is cut and everything is taped. I'm only doing uh, the demonstration of this in this first video because this is a beginner's project and I want you to see what I'm doing. So the, this uh, process will be repeated itself throughout the entire project. Now when you put in the base page it will cover the areas where you glued the other flaps together. You see that on the left and on the right? And that's the reason why we don't apply the designer paper on top of the flap before we actually build the page. I'm removing the back of the tape and I will carefully apply that pattern paper onto the base page. So this is A1 pattern paper on top of A1 base cardstock. And I'm putting some liquid glue there in the middle, just a little bit, and I'm carefully, carefully applying it. I'm picking up A2 pattern paper and I will put it on top of the second flap, which is the A2 flap. And if you notice, I'm placing the pattern paper in a way that there's about a, an eighth of an inch border of the black cardstock left around the pattern paper. I'm always making sure that it closes good. Here I actually made a mistake and I and I and my paper was a little too long and I had to go ahead and correct it, which I did later. I had the measurement written wrong in my 
on my paper so I cut it too much okay and putting a little glue and putting this on top this is the a7 inside piece that will go on the belt on the inside and the card that I cut out will go in the center Now this is a simple first page with waterfall and a belt. 